Hello everyone, and I'm excited to be uh, here and sharing with you about Microbit Classroom. My name is Andrew McDonald. I'm a technology educator based here in Ottawa, Canada, and I'm excited to be uh, diving into your Microbit journey with you. So, a little bit about Microbit Classroom. So, Microbit Classroom is an opportunity for you um, during this time, and in fact, when you're in person, hybrid, remote, this is a great opportunity for you to be working and sharing with your students. It allows for you to have uh, great management of your students code, uh, to be able to push out some starter code for everyone so they get all the same thing. Uh, and it also allows you um, to get set up very quickly. And I'm going to go through that process with you today. So uh, as I mentioned, it's really uh, great for organizing and managing your classroom. So that means you can push out code, you can have students collaborate, and also that collection of assignments at the end. There is no student registration or student login, so you don't have to worry about them forgetting their login information or forgetting those details. And it also allows for you to uh, sort of look over their, the student's shoulder to see their progress on their project, on their particular work, and allows you to help uh, trouble, troubleshoot them remotely. Now, this all being said, this can be used in person, so where you're uh, at the front of the classroom and your students are in the, you know, working away, um, or you're in a virtual classroom, uh, so you're you're on a uh, one of your remote calls, uh, your virtual connections with your students, and uh, this is an opportunity. So I would say that this is a more of a synchronous type of learning experience. Um, so that means that you would be with your students in person uh, or uh, remotely, um, but it's a, it's a synchronous opportunity or a live coding session. So uh, this is sort of what the, the Microbit classroom looks like. Uh, and we're gonna pop over there and I'm gonna show you uh, how we can get started. All right. So. Um, there's a couple different ways on getting your code into Microbit Classroom, and it really depends on where you're getting your code from. And uh, there's two ways that you would do within the Microbit Classroom. So you would set it up, you would get it ready, and then you would push out your code. But the other option that you can use for this is if you are on the Microbit uh, website and exploring some of their projects, which I would say are, are some great, great projects, um, but if we go ahead and, you know, we're, we're doing something like the flashing um, emotions uh, activity. So if we go ahead and click on this one, we can see how it will, will get set up, um, those sort of things. But what I'm more interested in showing you is this open in classroom option. And so when you go ahead and click on this, it will sort of open it and already have the code ready for you to explore with your students. And so that's one option of doing it. The other option for, or the other two options are um, getting started right here in the classroom. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do those two other ways. Once you have the code in there, the, it's, it's all back to the same. And so uh, we're just gonna show you that. So we got demo class. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the, the make code platform. You can use the sort of Python editor, um, but now that make code has Python integrated within it, I'm going to go ahead and use that. And this uh, temporary local storage, it's for um, if, if there's some, you know, loss of connection, uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're sharing those sorts of things. Um, you will probably want to use this, um, this checkbox here. And so, with that, I'm going to launch the classroom. And so what it does, it goes ahead and it gives me these four steps. And these four steps correspond to these four steps up here. Um, the editor, dashboard, student code, and uh, save the classroom. So uh, complete the code setup. So I'm going to want to go ahead to the editor and set up some code. So like I said, um, this one, uh, I had done it through the projects page. Here, I'm doing it through um, just the uh, a blank setting here. 
So if I click over to the editor, and you'll see here that I have the make code environment. So some of you might have uh, explored make code before, and you've played with the micro bit, and so here it is. So I've got a couple options here, so I can push out just no code or, or on start. I can also grab some some blocks for them to explore with, um, and and they can they can create a project, and I can sort of give them an idea. Another option is for me to take a, a hex code, uh, a hex file that I've already got, and I can just drag and drop it into this environment. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here. So I'm going to drag and drop this one, and so it loads that plot project into into it. And so this is an example of uh, a heads up game that I've I've created. And so um, what I can do is I can sort of take a few of these things apart, or I can add a comment here, um, you know, change. All right, yeah, so I can just add a comment here and, and add that and get them to, to change the, um, there we are, I'm back. So we can get, go ahead and ask them to change what they, uh, what they want to do in their, um, in their particular array here or, or something like that. So there's, there's lots of options, um, for you to get started. So, you know, change the, uh, items in the list for your project program whatever got to spell it right or you should spell it right as a teacher right so um there we are so there's our our code and now we can push this out to the students so we're just going to click in the top right here uh share code with students and so what that will do is it will share all of my code with the students now at this point i haven't invited my students so this would be something that I could maybe set up uh, about a minute before we start class um, because at some point it will uh, it will time out so you don't want to you can't set it up uh, hours in advance and so that's one of the things now back to our instructions uh, as I mentioned it's just we just move along um, just one two three four here so this dashboard so this dashboard are the joining details that we have for our students. And so we can either make this uh, nice and small uh, or nice and big. So you'll see if we collapse it right up here, it's a very small little strip, little gray strip here. But nice and big, you can have that on your, uh, on your smart board. You could take a, a screenshot of this, put it in the chat. So again, depending on how you're, you're working with your students. So uh, we're going to go ahead and add a few students to this and we'll see how they populate out. All right, so now that I've gone ahead and I've uh, created the classroom, I can go to the URL. I can actually um, pop it open here, copy that URL and give it to my students so that they can go ahead and join the activity. So I'm going to go ahead and join the activity using the details that were given to me. So we've got a lime mouse driving a tractor playing a guitar. And then we're gonna go ahead with this unique pin. So that unique pin is something that um, students, uh, so again, it makes it a very unique scenario. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a name. And so now you can see that I've got six students who are in that environment. And so. On, on the left hand side, we've got Theo. Uh, we can see his code that we have. And if I wanted to click on here, I can now see, if I just scroll down a little bit, uh, I'll see the student's code here. And so if we modify the code a little bit, um, knowing that it sort of quickly goes, goes together, we can see how uh, the code on the right hand side will quickly uh, look like it's it's going ahead and so that way this this student on the on the left hand side um, they can be um, can share their code and they can be done with it and so when they're finished they can go ahead and click I'm finished and then depending on the, how they're feeling 
And then the teacher can also see that. And so they can go ahead and say, okay, great job. Um, and then have a, uh, a look at it. Couple other things that are very nice is the share student code. So they can go ahead and click the share student code. So I can, I can go ahead and share my code to um, Rosalie if I wanted to. And so I can send that code over there. And so Rosalie would have a pop-up. Um, so here's Rosalie. Uh, your student has sent you some code. So if I click use code, it would refresh my current landscape. And so you want to use this when a student is stuck um, and they've just sort of given up and they need some help uh, right then and there. And so you can go ahead and push that out to them. And then you can you can guide them. So if we go back to Rosalie, um, we can see how, oh, yeah, you're doing great. Uh, you just need to add that logo up over there. Now, I'm not able to manipulate the code here. And so that's where I would tell the students uh, to be able to do that for them. So there's a couple other things like I had mentioned. So if I just uh, expand this a little bit, uh, we can go ahead and share the, the code at any point. We can download a report for all my students as a Word document. And so that gives me like a snapshot of all the students' codes at that time. So it's, that's again, that great way of, of um, seeing the assignments and they don't have to necessarily submit them. They're able to, to grab it on their own. And then we can go, uh, the last thing here we can, uh, or a couple last things here is we can download this classroom file. So that means that uh, we're, we're done with it uh, or uh, the, the, either the period is done or uh, we're done with the activity and we can go ahead and download the classroom HTML file. And so this HTML file, if for example, you want to, to start back up again, you just need to double click this HTML file and then you'll be given a new unique dashboard. And so the students will have to re put in those, uh, those new digits and those new um, colors and, and uh, uh, the classroom name. And so that allows you to, to continue off where, to continue where you left off the last time. So the last little bit uh, that I wanted to show you is for students when they're, so they're, they're done their work and they say, okay, I want to keep what I've done because this is a great project. Uh, and when I, um, when the, as you saw with Theo here, um, I, I have no longer have access to my project. So I would encourage the students to download their projects. And then, so that's where here, if we download it and we see that it's got this arrow pointing at a hard disk, that means it's going to download it onto my computer. And then I can use this and either save it in my Google Drive. I can then put it back into make code um, so that it's saved for, for the student. The other option here is if we'd have this, we can also pair it with a device and push it down to my micro bit if I have a classroom set of micro bits. So the last little thing that I wanted to, to show you is that when, let's say we're finished as the, the teacher um, and we want to end this session. So I can go ahead and end this session. Um, and so it will delete the, any of the classroom data that has been stored. Um, and we want to, um, and it's, it says, you know, that we've all of the, the students data, uh, or their programs, sorry, are uh, found in the HTML file. And so I just can go ahead and end session. And so here you'll see that it popped up right away. So this student, this student and this student all are finished. And so I'm ready to go for my next activity on this particular, uh, as the teacher. So I can get going with that. So uh, that being said, that's a very quick introduction to getting started with Microbit Classroom. Uh, I'm excited to have uh, shared this and thank you very much for being part of this session. Um, if you have any, uh, any feedback or you would love to stay, in, uh, would like to stay in touch, uh, I'm, I'm very open to that. So you can follow me on Twitter uh, or send me an email and we can, we can start learning together. Thanks very much for, for watching and uh, Everybody stay safe and happy coding.